Hey, oh, recording. This is Blossom Buddies, the podcast, quarantine edition. Yeah, this is the, the third week in a row we've had to do it remotely. The first episode had some problems. The second episode went off without a hitch. Uh, both episodes have been uploaded to YouTube. Um, hello, this everyone. This one will get uploaded to YouTube. Yes, it might be a little late, but you're probably listening to the video, the audio version of the podcast. And thank you for listening. And thank, thank you. if you're watching, thank you for watching. Jason, thank you for recording this with me. No problem. I'm having a I'm having a day. Um, f- first and foremost, this is season three, episode four of Blossom. Not episode five. Not episode five. <laughs> That'll be next week. Yeah. I actually I, I've watched two episodes of Blossom this afternoon. Nice. Uh, but before that, for the last, I would say, besides sleep. Last like thirty hours of my life has just been Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah, I knew you were gonna say that. I'm uh, actually not thirty hours. That's ridiculous because I'm only. The game's only been out for like thirty hours. Yeah, and I'm only seventeen hours into the game, but I'm on chapter nine, and I compared that with a couple other friends who I know have just only been playing video games, and they think I'm the furthest. Yeah, yeah that's, that sounds right. I think I'm chapter five. Nice. Um, also, I think you're halfway. I looked through the trophies, and there's 18 trophies for like chapters. Like there's cool. the the last chapter trophy is for chapter 18. That's what I figured based on the uh, based on where I, at, I am in the game, and based on what is in the first disc of the original Final Fantasy VII. Mm-hmm. Um, I pr- yeah, they just basically this it's the first disc of Final Fantasy VII. If the first disc was instead of being only like 20 hours total with all mm-hmm. the like everything you could possibly do extra. It's uh, like they scaled it out to about 45 hours and then there's a bunch of extra shit. Like there's, there's a thing you're going to discover coming up that is amazing. And we can talk about that once you get there, but I don't want to, I don't want to start the Blossom Buddies podcast by spoiling the Final Fantasy VII remake, because believe it or not, even though you know what happens in that game, there are many spoilers. I bet. Yes. Yeah. We can leave it at that. I'm what I started wondering is if, like, are the next episodes going to come out on PlayStation 5? I don't know. And are they going to look very much better? Like, are they going to have ray tracing and stuff? So this one looks like a piece of shit compared to the next two episodes? I can see in this version, because I'm playing on the original PlayStation 4 on a 4K TV. Some stuff looks amazing, but some stuff I can see where, even if you had the Pro, the um, the quality would be increased. And then yeah. I imagine the PlayStation 5 version will look like they'll re-release part one on ps5 and it'll look even better so mm. before part two comes out i may actually buy this again and play it again through but i'll yeah, know where all the secrets are this time and at that point though like once all the episodes come out are they going to sell it as one big game yeah but it'll probably be like the way kingdom hearts is where you'll have to buy the package for like 150 dollars. yeah i don't think they're going to put like a game of, it's not going to be like a game of the year situation they're going to be either two full games or three full games or whatever i think it's going to be three of them yeah three discs yeah it'll be like the three discs even though in the original the the last disc really only has the uh the last dungeon and like you can go back and do a bunch of shit so maybe it will only be two discs but i mean midgar is not half of the game in the original no exactly it's going to be more than more than two episodes yeah for sure i think they may also release more parts as dlc but that's based on just nothing that's based on uh just my theory yeah that's a theory so the, but it's good it's, this is a podcast about this blossom. Is a podcast about blossom we don't really have any housekeeping to do uh we're in the no i've been morning. inside for the past week <laughs> yeah um i haven't been up on the instagram so much because like i was saying in another episode um the last time i was at the office i had some notes to make instagram posts with uh and that I, I didn't know i would never go back to the office yeah that's a good point yeah. so uh what are you drinking today i am drinking michelob ultra michelob can, ultra yeah i don't know if you can it's i gotta get the, in the sweet sweet spot there it yeah, is right in front of you right in front i'm of drinking me. henderson's best i like henderson's it's from henderson's brewery i uh I don't want to go to stores anymore because I don't want to get COVID-19 and perish. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> the, 
this is a thing that we're gonna wait look what's back, happening in the world right now we're gonna look back on very fondly you know real talk though it's kind of like okay i won't go outside then cool yeah it's not that uh, i don't know it is a big difference but it, it sucks that i can't hang out with friends but like yeah working from home is sick and working from home is pretty good and like i've got a new new addition to the family so i'm glad to be able to spend lots of time at home with well family. yeah this couldn't happen at a better time for you yeah exactly i mean, I mean if it was gonna happen yeah theoretically it would happen never that would be the best yeah. time <laughs> yeah i guess <laughs> covid19 a pandemic not happening is the best outcome it is the best outcome second best outcome is that uh jason and i and our wives are gonna play mario kart tomorrow over yep. the internet it's gonna be good that's gonna be we should cool. twitch it to our our blossom buddies twitch channel. yeah <laughs> our new blossom people. buddies twitch channel i'm gonna set up tonight probably not <laughs> almost definitely not we'll, we'll we'll talk to each other over host party though that's how we can communicate that works or we could do zoom i don't know or does pam know how to anyway we can talk about this later yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is uh the blossom podcast about blossom uh, i just want to so finish gonna, my uh, thought i just I, want to finish my thought i don't like to go outside anymore so henderson's deliver this beer right to my door this is a free endorsement to all 30 of our listeners and six of our viewers nice yeah the people's pint brewery just down the street from us delivers now uh but i think we missed the window for ordering today i still got beer in the fridge i got more michelob ultras and we have uh bourbon and port and sherry we, we got booze they have today at five. they'll pick up today until five but i think we have to order before 11 don't we my wife is talking to me in case you thought i was just talking to joey on the bed here <laughs> I'm not talking to joey I'm talking to my wife she's over there and she will update us uh, about when you have to order beer from the People's Pine Brewery if you want delivery today. Excellent. So if you, if you listen to this episode three days before it comes out, you'll have that information in time. Yep. Yep. Uh, so we have a cold open. Uh, Tony gets a chain letter. Yeah. Nick's tossing, uh, I guess, junk mail in the trash. Yeah. Um, and he, they kind of a gag about chain letters, like totally irrelevant. There's a kind of there's some irrelevancy in this episode in this joke and also some very uh, not sex positive messages. Oh, but yeah, <laughs> we'll get we'll there. Get there. Um, yeah, and then th- there's a gag where he's like, "Oh, it says here that this person didn't send the mail and they got stung three thousand times, and yeah. then hit by lightning in the one place they didn't get stung." And of course, you know that they're talking about penises. That's what I figured. But like, would the bees avoid stinging his penis? I think they just wanted to make a dick joke. Yeah, that's a good Who? point. Yeah, there's a bunch of jokes in this episode that don't make a lot of sense. We'll get to those as they come. Who wrote this episode? Uh, I didn't write that down. It was not Don Rio. And I don't have my... Oh, I'm right. sitting here with a computer literally right in front of me. So this, uh, this episode also has a weird name. It's What Price Love? Question mark? Yeah, is that supposed to be like what price, comma love? Like what price, love? Or, like, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I don't understand. No, nope. what that means in the in the I watched it on YouTube, which is like an official, um, mm-hmm. like an official upload because you had to purchase it, obviously. And it was the same as it's it published is published by I- NBC or whatever. Yeah, and on IMDb, yeah. it's all call- also called that. What price, and, love? Yeah. Um, and I guess the price. It's dual meaning because because Blossom loving Vinny is having its toll on her friendship with Six, but also mm-hmm. uh, uh, Joey is paying a more literal price, uh, which we'll get to. Which we'll I get to. Spoiled it already. So this the person that wrote this episode has only written holy shit has only written two things, yeah. three episodes of the John Larroquette show and two episodes of Blossom. John Larroquette show this like a John Larroquette show has to be the sister show of Blossom yeah just like people like left Blossom to go make a show with John Larroquette because they were like what Night Court's done Night John Larroquette down. needs work the fucking songbird of the 90s the not songbird oh, also comedic news. voice of a generation I don't know John Larroquette was way too popular in the 90s and I never got it because I was too young to get his brand of humor but really he was just sort of like a, a Frasier kind of a comedian like kind of yeah well and it was kind of like the show was like wings if i remember correctly except instead of running an airport he ran a bus terminal Uh, i oh okay i thought it was like a diner there i think there was a diner 
in it. Or maybe well, he ran uh, the diner in the bus terminal. Hold on. Television sitcom about a recovering alcoholic who becomes the manager of a big city bus station. Okay, oh, so okay. he does run the bus station. Um, this person, Neve, Le, fuck, what's her name? I just said it. Eve Needleman. That's a hard name to pronounce. Like that's like a show name. Eve Needleman. That was Eve pretty Needleman. easy. I don't know. It sounds made up. I didn't have um, a problem she was well. also just a script coordinator on one episode of News Radio. Like, did she get yeah. fired immediately? This episode did kind of suck. Well, she went on. She did, then did a bunch of episodes for Larry Sanders. So thirteen maybe episodes like, of Larry Sanders. If you had the choice to work to continue working on News Radio or go to the Larry Sanders show, what would you choose to do? I personally would probably stick to News Radio if I had known how awesome it would get. Uh, it was pretty Larry's, awesome. Larry Sanders was also awesome. Larry Sanders is like the prototype for Curb Your Enthusiasm, though. So I don't know. That's a toss-up, man. Those are both great classic both great shows television shows that kind yeah. of changed i'd probably changed stick with news radio just because of the, of the one kid in the hall uh on it i'd be like yeah, yeah dave Foley, but hall. also also um fucking phil hartman oh yeah i mean a ton, ton of people dick. andy dick and, and uh, joe rogan yeah joe rogan before he was a weird podcast host with opinions yeah he was just, just a, a dumb janitor. Comedian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Andy Dick uh mid cocaine fueled uh Oh yeah. Like that was that was like when it was still a secret that he was just a big walking drug. Yeah. It was like, oh, he's a crazy wacky guy. He must be a crazy wacky guy. And then it, and then that show ends and then he fucking just constantly is in, involved <laughs> in scandal. <laughs> yeah. But like bad scandal too. Like oh yeah. Showing up at an award show and pulling his dick out kind of bad. Yeah, I feel like that show kind of kept him uh uh like under wraps or on a leash. Well he's like young. That, it did a he, a lot he was for young him. when that show started too. Oh yeah, he must have been like 25 or something. We could find out. We could do the math, but we're here to talk about Blossom. Um, we have uh, a credit sequence, the same as the other. I noticed in the, excuse me, I noticed in the credit sequence that the guy who plays Vinny uh, is in the main credits now. Bernard Hughes is in the credits as well. Yes. I made sure to check. But he's not in this episode. He's not in this episode. Neither he's is been. Portia Dawson who plays Rhonda, who is apparently also in the credits. I didn't see her, but IMDb tells me she's in the credits. Both of these spoilers, both of these characters are in next week's episode quite a bit. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, <laughs> next week's episode looks good. No, no it spoilers, was... but you like the title, and yeah. uh, it's a Don Rio episode, but it looks interesting. It doesn't look like I think Don Rio has been learning. Uh, you know, let's stop making episodes about writing to our mom and well home you'll video see. flashbacks we'll see you'll you'll see another high concept episode from don rio next week but, did he uh, write the the rockumentary one i want to say yes I don't and i want to i want to say yes because i want to say yes because i want to say yes damn it mm. i thought my thought would come what i was trying to say is uh the reason i want to say yes is because it's it's like got that high concept and i imagine when they were coming up with the idea for a blossom season two they were like what kind of cool different things can we do and that fucking madonna documentary would have been out yeah so they were like we definitely have to do that because blossom and six are always dancing in a mirror yeah they sure are I like the dance in a mirror this episode. Was there any hats? I don't think there was any hats. There was. Episode. Oh, okay. shit. Yeah, there was a hat. Oh, Six yeah, you're going to get two episodes confused. You're going to be like, yeah, there was, but that was no. another episode. No, I won't do it, but Six was wearing a hat. Okay. So, um, so just to finish what was, what happened is Tony's like, fuck that. I'm not going to you know, send a <laughs> chain letter back out. He stands up and one of the lights shorts out and like a light bulb explodes yeah, he's, he's like, like okay i'll with stamps yeah yeah that was it stamps. Yeah. uh real bad i think the cold opens are getting terrible yeah uh, useless i don't know i think they were just doing it because it was cool to have cold opens to sitcoms and they're written like comic strips yeah it's like a bazooka joe at least last week um it was part of the episode like it was the first in a long series of nick fucking up cleaning the house yeah, nothing this about this chain letter came back. Did Tony even appear in this episode anymore after this? Was this yeah. cold open just there for Tony to make an appearance? He lived in the kitchen mostly in this episode, I think. Oh, yeah, I did talk to Joey about uh, making bad decisions. Yeah. Right, okay. But oh, Buzz does not show up. 
However, I'm going to say right now, since I brought it up, my buzzkill for this episode uh, would be to beat him to death with a frying pan. Yeah, I, I light him on fire and then put him <laughs> out with the frying pan. I light him on fire with like hot grease and yeah. then beat him to death. But he's not in this episode. I, I thought we didn't do buzzkills when... Uh, but, yeah, I wasn't uh, sure. I thought about that and I was like, on, I'm, but... I'm going to write one down just in case. Yeah. Because Nick, Nick eyes that frying pan later on. I was like, okay, that'll be my buzzkill then. That's true. That we get a return to form from Nick in this episode as well. But yeah, uh, Nick gets violent. Nick hits uh so after the credits, Nick hits Vinny with a newspaper for yeah. holding Blossom's hand and and telling making, her future. Is he doing palm reading? He wasn't really looking at her hand or at her palm. No, right? they're just holding hands and making googly eyes at each yeah. other. And he was like, I see you lots of makeouts in your future. And uh Nick, Nick comes in. Yeah, Nick does that. He's pissed. He's just pissed off at Vinny. Um, I feel like these episodes chronologically are out of sync because a couple. <laughs> this. What I want to do that too. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Blossom. <laughs> I, I was planning on doing this uh, to begin with, and then I had the genius idea to move my my laptop to somewhere with better lighting, and I forgot about it. So we can <laughs> record the whole episode like this, or follow me, go the other way. <laughs> I don't want to show what my shorts look like. I did think about recording this without pants, and now I'm glad I have pants on. Be a man without pants, like a man without hats. It's true. I come from uh, the land down under. Is that that? Yeah. I'm gonna get uh, another beer. I'll All right. Something. So I'll I'll continue the episode because uh, you just derailed my thought right in the middle of a thought. But uh, so it seems like Nick like just suddenly hates Vinny again. That's why I think it's not... Yes. Because it was chronology. fine last episode. Yep. Uh, and Joey says, he comes and he's like, hey, can you imagine if that's how they act uh, right in front of you, what they do behind your back, Dad? And it, Nick is like, what the fuck? I don't need to hear that. And then, <laughs> and then Joey's like, yeah, uh, I'm going to score with some chicks. Uh, there's a game tonight. I'm going to hit a home run. And then after the game, I'm going to hit a home run with the ladies. And Nick is like, you're an idiot. Yeah. That's not, that's not how that works. It, and, Nick was like, do you uh, actually think that's going to work? And he was like, not a chance. <laughs> which was a good, a bit of levity, which is good. Mm -hmm. So I have a different beer now. I have a uh, Moosehead Lager, which, nice. yeah, it's pretty good. But it's, it's union made. So in case you're wondering if, this, if you're drinking a beer, that's backed by a union. Moosehead is backed by a union. Henderson's a local brewer. I doubt that's a union. That's just like a Toronto no. thing, right? Brewed and packaged by the Henderson Brewing Company. So I'm glad that people still have jobs in these various industries. Uh, yeah. So the warehouse where I work is still fully functional. And I can only imagine the horror you, you must experience going into work. In a warehouse? How in many a warehouse, warehouse workers are there? probably like a thousand wow really i don't want to say where i don't want to say what company i work for but let's just say it's like large distribution scale like across the whole country so but that's at the same location because you're in like uh support right my office is above the warehouse that's why i have to like go the to office I, yeah nice. exactly we have a warehouse but it's uh, most of the time zero people work in it it's just, we kind of go in and like get stuff and sometimes stuff comes in but like what's in there just ram just just ram <laughs> uh, no, generally computers we don't do uh parts really it'll be full computers and servers so there's like servers computers monitors i don't work for canadian tire but it's the same sort of infrastructure so just imagine a distribution center of that scale yeah That's and crazy. yeah uh yeah that would be nerve-wracking going into work with a thousand people in a warehouse not probably not at all at once probably more like a couple Fair. couple hundred people so, but it's yeah yeah working in my warehouse would be fine because no one else would be in it because you would be in there by yourself probably yeah there is a uh defender machine like an arcade game defender uh that that an old guy who used to work for the company bought and left there and there's a foosball game sweet yeah so it sounds more like warehouse. a it sounds like more more like a man cave than a warehouse there is a, a really old, disgusting leather couch that's falling apart uh, and covered in Cussing dust, but then couch. it's mostly computer uh, computers. 
the computers fuck on that couch when when he's <laughs> around. It's like Toy <laughs> Story, but a cage. weird a weird computer porno. Great. All right, six, we're talking six about feels neglected. <laughs> <laughs> here's my next note yeah uh, yeah um, six shows up and blossom's like oh i didn't know we were gonna walk to school together let me go get changed because then he's seen me in this but did, did you catch this so blossom is wearing like a, a purple like jean nurple. jacket oh yeah she's wearing and... a purple nurple she's wearing a green <laughs> t-shirt underneath and she's yeah, wearing and like red, red shorts i wrote uh blossom looks like the joker <laughs> <laughs> And yep, she, she goes does. to get changed, and I'm like, is she going to get changed because she realizes she looks like the fucking Joker? <laughs> she has to get out of her, like, alternate identity, her alter yeah, ego. Exactly. Um, I did not make the Joker correlation, but I did note that her outfit was ludicrous. It was ludicrous. It was the most yeah. 90s. It's like the 90s regurgitated all over a 14-year-old, 15-year-old girl, however the fuck old she is now. Uh, yeah. This is the hat watch part. Uh, Six comes in with the classic Blossom hat. Um, it's this this col this color white and this color pink of a bow. I'm pointing at the white flower yeah. and I, and the pink. Yeah. And lost somebody. Your finger kind of disappears over your head. It's there, true. So it. it was a white hat. Just for all you one at home listening. Mm -hmm. Now we're back in the living room, um, and Six and Nick once again when they're left alone they have large conversations. Like yeah. they have a conversation about how. Like you were saying, uh, six feels neglected. Yeah, she's, she's taking a take backseat to Vinny. Yeah. Yep. Uh, like her friendship with, with Blossom doesn't even exist anymore. Nick sort of lies it out to her that, you know, sometimes when you fall in love, you sort of have love blinders on. Yeah. So six is like, oh, that's kinky. Third, yeah. Is that a kinky like thing or whatever? I don't know what that is. I get like a blindfold. Is that what she thinks he means? Maybe, or just like, yeah, some BDSM stuff. Yeah, but he's Possibly. talking about how just like, just wait it out. Uh, this probably won't last. Meanwhile, we know that this lasts the rest of the series. Uh, but Nick tells her, tells her it won't last, just wait it out. And uh, I don't know, tell her or something. I kind of, I was feeding a baby or helping feed a baby. Yeah. I didn't do the feeding. I got the food. Say more about I that. I want to take credit away from my <laughs> wife who's over there. She was doing the feeling. So Six tries to talk to Blossom about not hanging out, and they end up getting into a fight because Six uh, Six just overreacts immediately. Um, well, I mean, to be fair, she's been dating Vinny for like four episodes now. Yeah, but that could be that's four. That's like a month. Yeah, that's oh, true. but really, it's more like a couple months, probably. Yeah, it's well, helped. it's ideal. Uh, theoretically, it's four weeks because in our world, it would have been four weeks. Yeah. So if we're living in real time alongside Blossom, no, it's a four-week-old relationship. Am. Yeah. When you're in quarantine, you all all you have is to check in to see what the uh, the old Russo family are up to <laughs> once a week. Um, I do like this format of recording one episode a week, and then it kind of it feels more off the cuff. Mm -hmm. The audio quality is the same. Besides a couple hiccups here and there, and then the side product of it is we have a video version automatically. So I like yeah. this. I like this new format. Mm -hmm. I think even after the quarantine is over, like I wouldn't be a, like obviously come over and hang. Like I miss, I miss you, man. Yeah. But this isn't totally out of out of the question to do. I'll just oh, it's a lot it. easier, uh, to, yeah. like from a tech perspective. Yeah, and I don't have to have like this revolving door of guests. AKA Jake for like three episodes in a row, which he fucking did not <laughs> yeah. care for. Apparently not, but it was enjoyable just listening to him hate Blossom. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It was funny. He, he loves you and I, I, I will guess he might or might not love me, but um, <laughs> I mean, that's why he did it. That's because he enjoys hanging out with you. Yeah, that's true. So I'm sure he'll Jake. be back as long as we don't just be like, hey, Jake, do like eight episodes in a row. I'm sure yeah. he'll come back occasionally. He's our most repeat guest at this point. Oh, hands down. Um, yeah, we had Mike on two episodes. Jake's been on what, like four now? Four. Nice. Um, Keith's been on two. Wait, I th was Keith on one or two? I don't remember. I don't remember. At any rate. Anyhow. Anyhow, this is a show about Blossom. Blossom, we learn... Uh, my next note is that Joey is still horny and desperate. 
Uh, yes, that's true. It's uh, Joey and Tony now talking. Joey comes in. It's we're back in the kitchen. Tony's yeah. like making coffee or whatever he does because he's addicted to coffee. Drug watch coffee. He was uh, wiping up the table. It was weird because Joey oh, comes yeah. in and sits down and just says, he's doing that thing they do in sitcoms where he like sighs <sighs> where he wants someone to ask him what's up and just yeah. Tony's not paying any mind. But he's like wiping up the clearly like vinyl tablecloth because every time he wipes you like hear the vinyl in the the microphone it, like, he also weird... was cleaning up like he was a diner waiter. yeah he like grabbed like everything and like wrapped it up in like napkins and like did a whole thing i'm like you're at home just pick up your plates and bring them to the sink i guess why that, are there two plates i guess that might <laughs> be a kind of a callback to when he worked at the uh the donut place that had Maybe. seating i don't know um my so wife, Joey, as my wife's laughing at me. <laughs> it's funny. Like my wife loves the podcast, uh, as as should everyone. Everyone should listen and love the podcast. But I think she's appreciating getting to listen to the live recording of it, and only one end of it. She doesn't know what you're saying. Oh yeah, because you have a headphone in. Mm -hmm, that's like you. that's like when I'm playing video games and my wife is trying to talk to the people that I'm <laughs> playing with, and she's talking and they can hear her, but they can't. She can't hear, so I have to relay back. I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah, I don't play online. Not for that specific reason, but I think that's a bonus. Yeah. To not playing online. Yeah, and tonight, like, when we play Mario Kart, I was like, we could just use, like, the Nintendo, like, Android app and, like, chat that way. But I have, I've never used it. I have a feeling it's going to be a nightmare. We should just have, like, our laptop set up with Zoom or, or House Party or whatever. House, probably just House Party will be fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the same thing thing ish right yeah essentially yeah. so um so joey's also still a virgin we learn yep and he struck out after his baseball game oh, yeah. because uh, struck out and tony's work. like oh whatever sometimes you get a strike and sometimes you hit the ball <laughs> and joey's like no not baseball you idiot it's a metaphor you stupid piece of shit is what joey says to his brother yeah i'm he supposed calls to be the dumb one you fucking idiot. shit <laughs> But yeah, Joey's worried he'll never have sex. And that's when I realized, oh shit, this is it. This is the one I've been talking about. Joey oh, was it? is going to get oh, okay. a prostitute. An escort. Well, an it escort. starts off highbrow. He calls it an escort. And Tony's like, you know, they're called prostitutes. And Joey's like, no, they're called hookers. <laughs> Yeah, well, right away, Tony, we're starting to get real problematic with uh, sex workers, but it was true. 1992 or three or whatever. That, and and uh, Tony also is like, that's a really bad idea because uh, it's extremely illegal. Yeah, and unsafe, um, presumably. And then the next scene is Joey on the phone ordering a prostitute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like immediately. Cold cut, like hard cut to Joey on the phone asking uh, what time she can be here. Yeah. So the they don't they don't even do any setup like so we find out soon that like Joey's calling the escort over on a night where everyone's supposed to be out of the house. There's no setup to that. Like there's no Tony saying like, "Oh, I'm going out later tonight." And Nick being like, "I'll be out later." It's just I think we're just supposed to it's inferred that Blossom is constantly hanging out with Vinny mm -hmm. and her and Six have ha had a falling out. So Joey's primed and you know Nick is never around because he's always out playing gigs or whatever. They haven't talked about him being a musician in a while. Um, yeah. so Blossom manages to hang out with Six that night. Yeah, well, Blossom has an, a conversation with Vinny, Yeah, which I found a little weird because wasn't it just the last episode where Vinny was like, we need some space from each other, like, we should see other people. And now all of a sudden, like, Vinny can't spend a second apart from Blossom. Yeah, but much like most of these episodes when they have a little fight, he just apologizes profusely and then Blossom's like, okay, because that happens yeah. <laughs> here. He's like, I'm going to hang out with the guys. And she's like, the guys. And he's like, okay, yeah, my man. buddy, my buddy. And she's like, oh, isn't he the, the guy, guy with the, the van with the bed in it? And he's like, yo, he got rid of that, but now he has an RV. And she's like, that's ridiculous. Can't you hang out with the super nerd? He fucking... Yeah. Like you know, no, he fucking uh, dissects frogs at home. Blossom's like, okay, whatever. And he's like, I promise nothing bad's going to happen. And then... She says, okay, and kisses yeah. her. <laughs> they kiss, and then uh, Blossom goes inside because she's going to hang out with Six. And Joey had this whole night planned. He was so stoked for everyone being out of the house. He's got a uh, suit on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He Blossom walks in, and Joey is practicing getting undressed <laughs> in the mirror in the living room. Like, he couldn't have been doing that in his bedroom because he must have realized how embarrassing it would look if someone like his sister walked in. 
Yeah, I thought that was a pretty funny scene. Actually, from this point, like this whole scene, starting now uh, to when, I guess, like when the hooker leaves, sorry, the sex worker leaves, the escort. I forget her name. Oh, uh, Candy with a K. Candy with a K. How else would you spell it? But she was Polish, so she had like some extremely Polvagovga Blogoblowski last name. But I thought the like the comedy routine of Joey trying to get everyone out of the house and just freaking out as people showed back up, I thought that was comedy gold. Yeah, that was pretty good. This, okay, so I just want to preface this whole next bit with I remembered this episode completely differently. I remembered this as the, the main plot point of the episode was that he had saved up $200 to order a prostitute. It was $100. Oh, you were wrong. You I were was so wrong. wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> and I thought it was more like it is 50-50. Like the, the A plot is Joey getting a prostitute and the B plot is six and Blossom having like a falling out. But mm-hmm. I don't remember any of that part of the story. Just Joey getting a prostitute is in my head. Yeah, because that's the way bigger deal. Like like a normal Blossom episode, yes, would be about Blossom and Six friendship. But then we throw in this thing where Joey's getting a prostitute. And obviously that just overshadows anything anyone else is doing. Like, again, I don't think we see Tony for the rest of the episode. Because who gives a fuck? Because yeah. Joey's trying to figure out how to get an escort in and then again out of the house. So, yeah, Joey tries, like you said, Joey tries to get Six and Blossom to go out. Six comes over, they go back and forth, they argue, and Joey keeps interjecting like, oh, so maybe you guys should just go out and fight. And then Blossom will be like, oh, well, fighting is for kids. Like, we should... And Joey's like, no, you should go fight on the lawn yeah. like children. Yeah, go run, and then Blossom, you can chase her. But also, before that happens, actually, there is a, a quick scene where he uh, he's like, oh, shit, Blossom's not going out, so he runs back upstairs. Oh, he tries he to calls, cancel. He calls the pimp back or whoever. Yeah. He's like, hey, uh, you know... I'll pay for her gas if you just tell her, page her and tell her to, to go home. And, and the guy's like, obviously on the phone, the guy's like, well, I'm going to get paid. And he's like, well, listen here, you better not, you know, what are you going to yeah. do about it? And then, and Joey's then he goes, like, all the bones in my body? Yeah. <laughs> so Joey's very easily manipulated because mm. if somebody over the phone was like, I'll break all the bones in your body, like, just be like, fuck off and hang up. But I guess it's yeah. uh, sex what work. What in yeah. the early 90s. So that guy was definitely a, a pimp. I don't know where he got the number from, but I imagine it was from the back of one of the porno magazines that he yeah. has it was so readily from the back available. Of this under magazine his bed. right here. Yeah. Is that a scene from no. this episode? No, I just Googled uh, Blossom Joey's bedroom. Oh. That was the, <laughs> the best thing I could find. I was hoping to find a picture with no one in it because I think it would be cool if we could just sit in different rooms in the, the Russo house. But. Uh, Oh, and there's more, just more, not full nudity, but he's got a calendar, a bunch of pinups. To be fair, that's what my bedroom looked like when I was his age. Did you have a, a Ferrari? No, but I had a poster of Britney Spears. Nice. <laughs> so like a thing. 15, 16 year old. Also, I think ropes. actually, oh wait, I've got it mirror flipped, right? He's on the... Yes. Sorry. I was like, Joey's, Joey's bedroom's backward. Zoom flips the video. We had a whole discussion before we started recording. Uh, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Chances I, are I you're listening confused. to this. I realized last week that we talked a lot about what's happening in the video. So this week I'm trying not to talk about what's happening in the video so much. But it's a bonus for the people who watch the videos. If you are listening to the audio right now and you're confused, go subscribe to us on uh, YouTube. Blossom yep. Buddy's home video. Yep youtube.com slash blossom buddies i had to solicit 150 of my friends so i could get a custom url but you know what it was worth it because now i have a custom url for this podcast that's going to last exactly one and a half more years yeah less than that we're almost halfway done because we started this in like june and there's 110 episodes and we've done like 41 or 42 episodes honestly my idea at this point is we finish blossom keep the name blossom buddies and all the branding but when people are like what's your podcast about we'll be like well we started we did the whole series of blossom and now we just do whatever yeah i think that'll be the best course of action and then we won't you know we don't we don't just talk about blossom anyway we talk about sitcoms it's true but then like we then have to we, we always have to bring it back to blossom uh, so once we're done with Blossom, we'll have a little more freedom. We can play a little fast. We have 70-ish more episodes to figure out what the concept will become. 
once Blossom's done. Uh, and until then, we're trapped. If, but if you have any ideas, like email us, let us know. Info at BlossomBuddies.net. Yep. Yeah, Facebook message us. We will respond on Facebook Messenger. Like immediately. Um, <laughs> I got nothing going on, man. That's it is a pandemic outside. Everybody has a, a cough and a flu. And it's, Remember, remain indoors. We're about a week away from zombie apocalypse, I feel like. At any moment. Remember bath salts? I thought that was going to be a zombie apocalypse. People yeah. just started eating each other's faces all the time. That's true. Um, it was I started a Facebook group called the Zomb- the Toronto Zombie Awareness Program at that point in time because I was like, we need to all figure out safe houses and uh, quick places to escape to if this is a zombie apocalypse. You should resurrect that page for the fucking COVID-19 crisis. It's still up. Like I'm saying, look up Toronto Zombie Awareness Program and join it on Facebook. I'm into it. Maybe I'll it's got a great picture. The picture, the cover photo is maybe a little outdated right now, but it's uh, Rob Ford at the zombie walk, like eating what I'm sure is just a chicken or, or turkey leg, but it's supposed to, like he's got the, it's supposed to be that he's eating human flesh. He's dead now. He's dead now. That's why it's a little, maybe <laughs> not the most best picture to keep having up. But I don't think I'm going to find a better Toronto-based zombie picture than that. Also, Doug, Doug Ford, our premier, hasn't been completely dropping the ball for this whole thing, which is the most surprising part of this whole pandemic. Yeah, he's handling it great. I think Everyone's he's just like, I can't fuck this up if I ever want to have a political future. So he's got his... <laughs> and then there's Donald circle. Trump. <laughs> yeah, and then Donald Trump is, Trump is like, it's probably, not, it's probably not even real. Once it warms up, it'll be fine. Yeah, he also said, uh, I think yesterday he said that the virus had gotten too too brilliant for antibiotics yeah it's smart now <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's a learning virus i liked it's, it weeks ago when he was like you know science is one of those things that i'm you know i i don't know a lot about but like i'm not good in that area but i'm getting better in that area and like fuck that you fucking idiot like you're the hey donald trump i know you listen to this podcast because you're stupid <laughs> Um, this podcast is stupid and you're stupid. Uh, why don't you take a long walk off a short pier? That's, uh, uh, Blossom Buddies officially endorses this message. Yep. Paid for by friends of of Blossom Buddies. (laughs) But like, do you, can you really be mad at Donald Trump, who is one idiot? Or do you be mad at like 80 million people who voted him? to be present i am at a lot of Amer- things about the usa but i don't want to this is that's a different podcast that's politics buddies <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, podcast. that'll be our first episode after blossom buddies and if trump if trump trump i'm gonna call him trump from now on if trump wins the re-election then we can talk about him after blossom buddies ends next summer yeah and if he doesn't win the next election it'll be interesting to see how this uh pandemic affects his re-election if joe biden is the president that's worse that's like i mean he's kind of a kid toucher he's a this the next election is a, a kid a kid touching rapist versus a rapist yeah but so do you vote for the republican rapist or the democratic pedophile <laughs> like yeah who is america also, <laughs> who, who also has pretty conservative views like joe biden it's like it's two it's two right-wing people running right. like joe well, biden's kind of like a cool like cool was a, like a cool version but now he's senile and doesn't know what he's saying ever it's a little senile it's too bad i mean i respect that bernie sanders dropped out of the race because it gives the democrats a better chance since like I mean, last election, their their votes were divided. Yeah. Um, uh, Sanders stayed in long enough that, like, when he was overtaken by Hillary, that people just gave up on the Democrats. They didn't want to vote for Hillary. So I like that Bernie Sanders dropped out early, maybe to let Joe Biden uh, bolster some more support. But Joe Biden, ha- like, hasn't really said much since the no. pandemic started, which is, like, problematic because... Donald Trump is out there just saying everything all the time on he like he I, I saw at a this great point bit. like how much more more damage could Donald Trump do like he oh, already he shut down like all the like um like Planned Parenthood funding and like the gay rights websites he shut them all down and the pandemic relief squad or whatever it's called shut that down two years ago it was yeah, like the first one of the first cuts he made was like there'll never there'll never be a pandemic. Everybody's telling me how much there won't be a pandemic. 
everybody's been saying how much I'll, I'll be the leader in yeah. a world of no pandemics. Yeah, it's like I made it through uh, a year and a half of presidency with no pandemics. So it seems like a waste of money. Now look at him. Space Force, though. We're going ahead with Space Force. I do ah. respect that. I like, I've kind of kept my mouth shut about it, but like, that's, I don't know. Space Force is kind of fucking awesome. <laughs> I mean, if you're in Space Force, that's probably dope. Yeah, but I mean, it's probably a giant waste of money. Like, I feel like it's a big waste of money. But it's kind of cool. Yeah. But this is a podcast about Blossom. That's not true. about the 2020 election. God help us all, because uh, Blossom and Six are still fighting. <laughs> They're still fighting. They go into the kitchen, and uh, Joey lets... So Blossom and Six go into the kitchen... The escort knocks on the door instead of ringing the doorbell, so Joey's luckily able to sneak her in and upstairs, uh, where we find out she's Polish. Uh, her name's Candy with a K. Uh, she thinks that Joey is Bruce Springsteen, because I guess that's the <laughs> Hello, face, fake name he gave. Um, uh, he wants to pay with the money in his Winnie the Pooh bank. Yep, which I thought and was hilarious. It was hilarious, and she was also like, there's $100 in there. And he's like, yeah, I've been saving up for this before I knew this existed. <laughs> Which was a pretty good line, I thought. But we get a meanwhile where uh, Blossom and Six are in the kitchen making Oh, making food. chili fries. And they're arguing about Vinny still. And Blossom finally says she'll fix Six up with one of Vinny's friends. And then Six kind of like very like, you know, brings it down and says, what's, what's it like to be in love? Mm-hmm. And Blossom is just kind of like, you know, it's the it's dopest the shit ever. Yeah. ever. And then yeah, you can't blame of, me. Like this is the best thing that's ever happened to anyone. Yeah, and to be fair, love is great. You know, Pretty falling good. in love is cool, and being in love is great, and fighting with Can your you friends. Can you imagine we didn't have wives and we had to like just live by ourselves all yeah, alone? Yeah, this would this. suck, it would dude. Be terrible. This would like, suck. Like me and oh. my wife both have like a couple friends uh, that yeah, they're just single and like by themselves, and that's gotta suck. Yeah, I do too um also no you don't you're just trying to trying to ride my coattails i don't have any single friends <laughs> <laughs> actually you know what two two of my single friends live at home so you know that's a fate worse than being alone i would say if you were in a oh god trapped inside with your parents as a 30 year old man stuck at home with your parents you can't even go to somebody else's house i feel like that would be an absolute nightmare um, My wife has actually suggested moving in with her, her parents a couple of times because like, yeah, even though I'm working from home, I'm working. So like she's taking care of the baby all by herself and like her parents have had been coming over to help out. And I think it would be good for her to be at her parents' place, but also that would drive me insane Yeah, to live with her parents and just yes. live there. Cause like it's, uh, we won't get into it. This is a podcast about Blossom. <laughs> I'm not going to air my relationship uh, issues uh on the internet i don't know where else i would air them um well okay so, running so out of notes here this okay this, this is when is i start relying on you this is where we go back this is where the hookers like first things first cash yeah. uh joey starts to get undressed and she's like no that's the second thing yeah that's when he gets out the window the 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 piggy bank um and then you hear blossom be like oh there's the fire oh, yeah, fire i didn't write blossom that down six burn the oil immediately because they're idiots she comes up and knocks on the door. So Joey tucks the hooker under the bed, uh, right. which I thought was like, what? Uh, He's like, get under the bed. Like, my, my sister's dad, she can't know you're here. And then yeah. he's like, I don't even know where the fire extinguisher is. And I guess it was under Joey's bed because the, <laughs> the visual gag is that the prostitute pulls the, props up the, the, the fire hands extinguisher. Hands it up That's to him word. from behind the bed. Mm-hmm. Uh, any visual runs, gag it doesn't make any sense that it would be under joey's bed no unless joey also started a fire in his room and had previously got the fire extinguisher and just threw it under his bed when he was done well what a coincidence yeah um so nick comes home after they put the fire out of this well so they put the fire out and then joey's walking back to go upstairs and that's when nick comes home he's like right. i rented your favorite movie oh yeah dumbo, dumbo. <laughs> and, and i was like what is that supposed to be a joke like is it supposed to be funny because he also says he doesn't say your favorite movie he says your favorite movie from when you were a kid which sure that makes sense that dumbo might be his favorite movie this was to set up the joke that he goes uh he's like um 
can we just do we have to watch it tonight and then nick is like well you know if you get something for one night you want to get your money's worth oh i didn't even catch that joke and then joey's like hey and i didn't botch that joke and then joey's like uh yeah don't i know it (laughs) i I totally went over my head watching the episode i was like i don't know what they're talking about right now (laughs) that might be the first time i got a joke out without fucking up the setup and the punchline too Mm -hmm. I make, I'm evolving as a podcast host. You are. I'm evolving, personally. Um, Joey goes upstairs, and I guess he's like, my dad's downstairs. And she's like, not for $100. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, you don't understand. Uh, everyone's downstairs, and we got to get you out of here. And he devise a plan. And that plan, of course, is, oh, my friend was over practicing a play, rehearsing well, a play. First, she's like, she's like, is she, is he as smart as you are? And oh yeah. He's like, oh well, almost. Almost. <laughs> she's like, oh, this is gonna be a piece of cake. And yeah. I thought, so like, if Joey's dad was dumber than Joey, this plan would have worked. She yeah. would have been right in that assessment of this shitty honestly, plan. Honestly, she should have jumped out the window because, in my memory, this goes back to what I was saying earlier in this episode. In my memory, they devised some thing where, and I thought this was gonna happen because we go to downstairs to the living room. And Joey's standing on the other side of Nick, so his back is to the door. But then I'm like, oh, six and Blossom are on the couch. I thought they did a thing where Joey just talks and talks and talks while this while the hooker leaves. But no. She yeah. just comes downstairs with this piggy bank. She's like, Well, that was nice to do. Nice I rehearsing that play. Rehearsing this play. Good to see you. And then Nick is like, Oh, you go to his school. And she's like, Well, I mean, I know the principal. And then yeah. a long laugh while she smiles, and it was so funny. It was hilarious. I had it would a have been funnier chuckle. if she followed the fucking plan and just said yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, Nick knows immediately that she yeah, was a because the camera cuts back to like Joey says goodbye, and he's like, "I can't believe that worked." And camera cuts back to Nick, and he's just got the kitchen door open. Like, like, yeah, it's game time, and you're gonna get played, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, that was good. And then, uh, yeah. He Nick immediately threatens Joey with a frying pan. Oh, no. yeah. He sits Joey down and he's just like walking around the kitchen trying to figure out what to do. He's like, you know, I spared your sister and, and Six when they, they caught the, the kitchen on fire earlier. And, uh, but now I've got some place to place all this rage. And he picks up the frying pan and he's just like assessing the frying pan, which I would have, again, used to beat uh, Buzz into a bloody pulp. <laughs> um, doesn't beat him with a frying pan. Joey's still alive. Yeah. Also, Joey says a whole thing about how, uh, oh, she has a heart of gold and she just needed the hundred dollars to like get back on her feet. And that's when Nick is like, okay, look, first of all, sex is good. Yeah. Second paying of for all, sex is bad. Paying for sex is bad. That's the, that's the problematic element because mm-hmm. like, that's not a sex, po- like whether you believe that or not, that's not a sex positive way to look at prostitution. Nope. prostitution when it's safe and you know done respectfully can be great i've yeah. never gotten a prostitute personally but i can see the merit of being able to sell your body for sex and that it goes all the way from cam girls to porn to literal prostitution obviously there's lots of stigma and all of that but it's not sex positive to be like that's bad buying sex is bad and that's, yeah, a that's very, literally what they said it's a very early 90s sort of take on it but very, what was nice though like joe sitcom. was like yeah i get that i get that it's bad i just don't get why so like that kind of yeah. that was a nice that was yeah that was sort of like the other side of the the debate so somebody in the writer's room is clearly like well it is a kids it is a show for teenagers yeah let's not i guess like it's good to not promote yeah well like that they kind of Towards the end of the the heart to heart chat, like Nick's thing was that like trust me, like you'll like it better when like you don't pay a hundred dollars for it and like you it just happens naturally or whatever. Like it'll be way better. And like that, that's probably a pretty good message. That's the me- that's the main message about it. I just felt it was like off putting that he was like, you know, paying for sex is wrong. Where mm. it, it's it it's not wrong. It's just frowned upon societally. Yeah. And like I said, like, where, where's the line? Like, yeah. And then what he, again, what Nick later said was like, you'll appreciate better when you earn it or whatever. Yeah. And that, that is true. Paying for sex. If you're a teenager might not be the best way to lose your virginity. Nope. 
probably not. That's probably the lesson in this episode. I would call that the lesson. I think that was, was that it? Or did we get anything else? We didn't get anything else about Six and Blossom, right? Like they kind of wrapped it up while they were making fries. No, the re- last thing I wrote, the last sentence I wrote was not very sex positive. So I think it was their conversation. They have the heart to heart and then credits. Yeah. And there's been no post. There's just been credits in the bloopers from the, uh, from the show. Yeah, no, no post credits uh, sequences. The cold opens the last couple of weeks have been real shitty. Uh, yeah. That's my opinion. H of the cold opens. They're phoning them in. So we covered hats. We covered no drugs, no woes. Um, yeah, in my opinion, Nation, this episode uh, was the ep- one of the catalysts for wanting to do this podcast. Interestingly enough, uh, I remembered it completely wrong. Um, but the the stuff with the Joey and Candy w- was the funniest, best part of the episode. Yeah, and right. Six- Joey's just desperation. Like, and uh, that's big credit to Joey Lawrence's acting. He's good, man. Yeah, he doesn't like break character because I imagine no. he was just like that. Yeah, like Tony uh, or uh, Michael Stoyanov, I don't think he would have pulled that same plot off. Uh, no. Like comically. I don't think he's very funny. He's a fine actor, but like he's not very... The the, the cold opens a prime example of just like when the, the light bulb sparks or whatever and he's like, anybody got any stamps? I'm like, that's... Well, I like Michael Stoyanov, but it's, it's almost like they miscast him. He's, they cast I mean, him just for his giant nose that <laughs> blossom. Like that's... And I don't like I don't want that to be a slight at Michael Stoyanov, but my thing is is like I don't buy him as an ex druggie. I don't nope. buy him as this like ladies man. I don't buy him as the kind of person that would go and become a paramedic. And like when like, he, he tries doesn't... to make jokes, like it's all so like schlocky. Like it's yeah. like I'm making a joke right now, audience. He comes off to like... me almost like the blo- what the Blossom character would be like if he was a guy. Yeah, that's fair. You know? Like a little Knows nerdier, a little like more of like the smart character. Yeah, would be the badass. Like I don't buy him as a badass. That's that's. No, that's remember that one episode? Uh, I forgot what the whole episode was about, but Tony had the fantasy about like everyone started drinking beer, and he was just like, "No, I'm an alcoholic. I can't have all this." And everyone else was just the badass. Yeah, that was great. That great made scene. that made they, the most sense. Yeah, they threw the beer at him. That was funny. Throwing beer at people is funny. Do it. <laughs> Once we're out of quarantine, go throw beer at people. That's the lesson? That's not the lesson. That's though. the lesson. The lesson <laughs> That's the lesson is, from that other episode. Yeah. The lesson here, though, I would say is, uh, you know, did I say my opinionation, really? Not really. The episode was fine. Yeah, it was fine. Uh, I just misremembered the, the, uh, the Joey sex worker thing um and yeah the the lesson honestly is like uh you know don't lose your virginity to a prostitute and when it comes to six and blossom like you you don't have to like completely end your friendship because your friend is seeing somebody you're gonna have more time to hang yeah best if you have more than one friend you know have a couple friends not just one yeah the lesson of this episode is have more than one friend (laughs) really when you get down to it (laughs) Uh, I used to have a rule, like, when I was around that age and, like, into my mid-20s, like, whenever someone gets into a new relationship, I think it was three months, I decided, was the time you had to give them uh, where, you know, okay, we're not going to see them for, like, three months because we're going to spend more time with this person. Unless they're, like, they started dating a girl from your posse, you know, mm. which which happened when I was around that age. Like, you know, we'd have, we'd had, like, our core group of friends, and then there would be, like, girls that hung around with us that were also a part of our core group of friends and everybody would date each other very incestuously. Um, but that's what being a teenager is like. It's a little different in your twenties. Then yeah. that you're, you're, once you're out of high school. Yeah. Your theory is a little bit better, more applicable to like the twenties, but yeah. Yeah. And if you go past that three months and you're still not seeing your friend, then you have a conversation with them, but you got to give Absolutely. them that leeway. Absolutely. And uh, as we went over at the top of the show, Vinny and six or Vinny and uh, Blossom have only been dating for like four or five weeks, and so they've already six needs to lighten up. They're already a bit of an on and off relationship, it seems like. Well, as of the last episode, when Vinny was like, I thought I could see other people, remember and that? Just, just wait till the next episode. I've gone ahead one, and uh, there's more, more of that to be talked about. 
but this has been this has been season three episode four of uh Mm -hmm. blossom blossom buddies you can yeah i've got to go play some more mario kart with my wife because we're practicing for the big game tomorrow (laughs) we played two before this podcast and uh, we're tied now she won one and i won one sweet uh you guys you're probably gonna just beat everybody madison's Uh, pretty good is she okay yeah uh, you I'm not bad, out. but we don't. You have the like the extra pro controller. We're playing with the yeah. tiny little controller Ooh. that's this big, because we only got the one switch controller or the one set of Joy Cons. And I was like, maybe we'll buy a, a, a pro controller, but there's no way that's happening before tomorrow anyway. So I'm like, fuck it. And it's okay. It's actually not too bad playing with them because you have the motion controls. So like, you don't even really need to use the joystick so much. You just hold the acceleration button. And you can just kind of steer and hit the attack button. Thank you for your expert analysis on Mario Kart. Uh, you yeah. can email us at info <laughs> uh, This has been another episode. We'll see you next time. And uh, bye. bye. Oh, like, subscribe. Likes, uh, hit up that like button. Hit subscribe the notification to bell to get notified of new episodes. Yeah. Um, watch our watch. Should we? Should we? I've had two beers now. Should we? Tell one friend. Tell one friend. Tell one friend. But should we as hosts, should we promote other other material for our few listeners to, to listen to and watch? There was a point in time where I would have suggested the Cracked YouTube channel, but there hasn't been anything new there in two years because they fired all the video staff. Uh, Red Letter Media is a great, is what I've been mostly watching. Yeah, I haven't been watching much. Like yourself, I'm, I've been playing Final Fantasy VII. And, uh, oh, we've been watching 90 Day Fiance before the 90 Days getting caught up on that it's been uh, a lot of drama if you like reality tv 90 day fiance is the tits yes i, I love can watching people to that. trash their own lives it's great that's blossom buddies that's blossom buddies this is probably the part where we are talking oh, yeah, yeah. bye, bye.